Hi guys and welcome to another episode of the Meat Medic Podcast. Now in today's episode we are talking about how to lose weight naturally and how to lose weight by using your hormones. Very, very important episode. Before we get into it though guys, if you are liking this channel, I would love you to subscribe if you're not already. Hit the like button for the video, share it to all your friends. Let me know in the comments down below how you're getting on with your weight loss and health journey. I'm sure, like me, everyone out there has pretty much had their own health journey when it comes to weight, ups and downs, ups and downs. You probably tried calories in, calories out. We've pretty much all have. Very low calorie diet, slow carb, keto, whatever. Most things just don't work or they do for a short time and then they just fizzle out. They're just not sustainable. Most of the time, that's because, and look, I'm no exception to that. As I said, this is what I used to look like. This is what I look like now. I'm no exception to this, but most of the time these things don't work because people don't understand the basics of weight loss, why we have the weight that we have, and how to actually lose the weight. And really that all comes down to our hormones. It's pretty simple for like 99.9% .9 of people. It's actually the hormones that control the weight. And if you're not targeting those, you're really never going to win. It's like trying to ice skate uphill. So we really have to understand the hormones and the role that they play in the body. So let's talk about the hormones. So hormones are critical messages that basically control pretty much almost every aspect, every function of the human body. And weight is definitely no exception. There are a few key hormones that we're going to talk about today that we really need to understand how they work, how we use them to help us lose weight. And a few of those key hormones are leptin, insulin, and cortisol. Now, sex hormones are also incredibly important when it comes to this testosterone and estrogen. I have separate episodes on those, so make sure you check that out if you want a little bit more detail. So let's talk first about insulin. So insulin is basically our primary storage hormone. It's our primary way of regulating our blood sugar. It's pretty simple. For the most part, blood sugar comes into the body, it raises the blood glucose, and then insulin goes up to compensate. It brings the sugar level down, pretty simple and straightforward. That glucose basically has to go somewhere. And the glucose mostly, primarily just gets turned into fat. That's pretty much what insulin does for the most part. Insulin is an anabolic hormone, so it builds storage. And that will either be muscle or fat. If you prioritize building muscle, you give it the incentive by doing resistance training and a good diet, like a carnivore diet, it's probably going to build protein and muscle more than fat. But if you're not doing that, it's pretty much just going to build fat. There's pretty much no two ways about it. You look at patients who inject insulin, like for patients with diabetes, for example, there's a reason why we tell them to alternate the injection site so they don't just do one every uh, in the same place every time. If you do it in the same place every time, you basically just end up this getting this massive bulge of fat where you injected it. It basically just causes fat to hypertrophy and just grow in where you've injected the insulin, which is really not what you want, just one massive ball of fat in your body. Really not ideal. So insulin is super, super important. The way to try and reduce your insulin levels pretty much primarily is don't eat sugar. Reduce your carbohydrate intake. The absolute requirement for exogenous, so that is external carbohydrate sources within the human body, is exactly zero. Absolute zero. Your body does need glucose. Absolutely. But you don't need to consume glucose. Your body can generate glucose by itself through a process called gluconeogenesis. And that is a demand-driven process, not a supply-driven process. So if you eat excessive protein, it doesn't just get converted to sugar and then get converted to fat. It actually just gets burned off mostly in thermogenesis. Anyway, I'm getting slightly off topic. Back to insulin. We can reduce the insulin levels by reducing the carbohydrate intake and moving to a low carb keto or ideally a carnivore diet. Carnivores will almost invariably have incredibly low insulin levels and therefore incredibly low insulin resistance levels, which is also a major factor. If you are resistant to insulin, basically what happens is you need more insulin for it to work. More insulin actually typically just causes more weight gain. So insulin resistance is a big, big problem as well. 
Now, there are other ways that you can reduce insulin, and that's with things like exercise. Exercise, resistance training is best. Hands down, absolutely no way. Cardio just does not come close, but cardio is still useful. We do need to be doing both ideally to get the maximum benefits. I recommend to my patients at least three episodes of resistance training per week, ideally with at least a couple of days of cardio thrown into the mix. And that's pretty much in line with keeping with Australian, American, and UK guidelines as well. So leptin, ghrelin, and GLP. These are our hunger, satiety, and appetite regulating hormones. Incredibly important. Leptin is a hormone that is probably one of our most important hormones when it comes to fat actually after insulin. Probably insulin is more important. Leptin basically tells the body that you're full, that you've had enough you've had enough fat, you've had enough food rather. You've got enough fuel in your body already. You don't need any more. It's produced from our fat cells about 99% of our from our fat cells, a tiny bit from the gut I believe as well about 1%. And think of it like this. So let's think of your fat storage, mostly around your tummy, as your fuel tank in your car. Very simple. Your leptin levels are your fuel gauge and your fuel lines are basically travel, you know, connecting your body to your engine, which is basically your metabolism. So when you've got a lot of fat storage, your fuel tank is full. Leptin tells your body, don't worry, I've got loads of fuel here. You don't need to fill up anymore. You don't need to go to the servo. You don't need to go and buy that pie from the servo as well as the fuel. You just need to use the fuel you've already got. Perfect. No problem. One of the problems here, though, is when your insulin levels are very high, because it always comes back to insulin, when your insulin levels are very high, it effectively blocks leptin. And you can get this leptin resistance kind of syndrome. And basically, it's like saying you've got no fuel gauge anymore. Your body, your metabolism, your engine basically can't see that you've got all this fat. Your brain can't tell your body that you've got all this fat storage already. So it doesn't know to utilize it. It doesn't know to use it. So if it can't see it, it can't use it. Insulin actually also, because it always comes back to insulin, insulin also basically just blocks leptin from not only being seen, but it also blocks the fat from being metabolized as well because basically insulin is trying to store fat. So that's a really big problem as well. So leptin is very, very important. I mentioned ghrelin. Ghrelin is a hunger hormone as well. It's our primary hunger hormone. And basically, if we have more ghrelin, we will feel more hungry. So ghrelin is also very important. Now, ghrelin can be reduced from eating good quality foods, improving your satiety levels, eating proteins and fats primarily. Sleep is also a major factor when it comes to ghrelin production. And if we're not sleeping well, you will actually get more ghrelin produced. Think about the last time you really didn't sleep. The next morning, you were probably really, really starving. You were probably pretty hangry and you just wanted to eat pretty much all day. Now, part of that will also be higher cortisol levels. We'll come to that in a moment. But it's primarily going to be actually more ghrelin being produced. And that is a big problem. I mentioned GLP, GLP-1. This is glucagon-like peptide. And this is our main satiety hormone. Now, this is produced when we are full, when our stomachs are full. And it tells the body, oh, I've eaten enough. You don't need to eat any more. Thank you very much. I actually feel very pleasantly full. Now, GLP-1 is incidentally what we're also giving patients as an analog with injections like Ozempic, Wegovy, Saxenda, Trulicity, and so on. I have got another episode on those. If you're wanting to check that out, make sure you check out the rest of the videos on the channel. If we don't have high levels of GLP, we are going to not feel full. We're going to want to eat more. We need to get the GLP up by eating foods like protein and fat. Very simple. Cortisol. Cortisol is a huge problem for a lot of people. Insulin is probably the most important, possibly followed by leptin, and then probably cortisol. Cortisol is our main stress hormone, and basically stress equals cortisol. Cortisol equals stress. Now, cortisol will raise if your body is under any stress. So acute stress will raise cortisol, and chronic stress will raise cortisol as well. 
Now, acute stress is actually good for the body on the whole. It can induce things like autophagy, but most people are running under chronic stress problems, and this is a big deal. Chronically raised cortisol levels cause all sorts of problems in the body, but they definitely can trigger weight gain. So think about cortisol like this. Let's go back to prehistoric caveman. And in many ways, we're still like that, some more than others. If we go back to those days, stress basically meant starvation. We didn't have mortgages. We didn't have, you know, sending the kids off to school. We didn't have the school run. We didn't have the commute to work. We didn't have the tube and the metro and all these other things. We didn't have people, you know, with crime and all the rest of it, all these other things that causes stress and COVID and all these other problems. No, we basically had starvation. We either ate or we starved. That was pretty much the two states of mankind. I mean, pretty boring if you ask me, but anyway, I digress. So stress meant starvation, basically. And what does starvation mean? Starvation means go and eat because you're dying if you don't. It means hold on to your storage because you're dying and you need to hold on to your storage as long as possible. It means don't use your storage because you're literally dying. And if you use your storage up too quickly, you will probably die. And number four, it says seek out terrible food that's going to make you fat because that's more storage and you're starving. So you need more storage. So basically in a nutshell, very simple, cortisol basically makes us fat as well as all the other hormones involved. And it will also reduce your sex hormones like testosterone and estrogen, which do have a protective effect against weight gain. So it's a double whammy, pretty much a triple whammy, if not a quadruple whammy actually with all those issues I mentioned there. So cortisol is a big deal. The main ways we reduce our cortisol also just happens to be the main ways that we improve our other hormone levels. Eating a proper diet. I mentioned physical stress will also cause your, your cortisol to rise. This is a big deal. We need to eat a good diet. Now, I'm not talking about the rubbish food pyramids. You know, if you want to hear me ranting about the food nutrition guidelines, check out this other video. I'll put in the link in the description down below. Basically, we're talking about a carnivore or a keto diet proven to lower stress levels. We're also talking about things like earthing or grounding. Again, if you want to look into more of that, again, if you want to look a bit more into that, I do have an episode on earthing and grounding, clinically proven to reduce your cortisol levels. Eating butter. This contains butyrate, which can also has been proven to lower your cortisol levels. Incidentally, we produce a huge amount of beta hydroxybutyrate when we're in ketosis. So a keto diet like carnivore can definitely reduce your stress levels as well. Getting proper sleep, absolutely paramount. You will never reduce your cortisol if you're not getting proper sleep and also regular exercise, as I already mentioned, for insulin. Pretty much in a nutshell, the hormonal problems that most people have and why they can't lose weight. If you don't fix these hormonal problems with insulin, ghrelin, leptin, GLP, and cortisol, you're never going to lose weight. You're always going to struggle. It's never going to work properly in the long term. It's always going to be like trying to ice skate uphill. It really will. Thank you for watching. If you did like this, make sure you hit that share button, hit the subscribe, hit the like. Let me know in the comments down below how you're getting on with your weight loss journey. Take care and I'll see you in the next episode.